So Asheville City Council the other day, uh, yesterday, just passed a non-discrimination ordinance whereby any business, meaning anybody that has a uh, that conducts any kind of business with more than one employee, as in more than just themselves, doing anything whatsoever. Uh, is subject to this uh, anti-discrimination based on race, ethnicity, sex, hairstyles, clothing, gender identity, um, religion, all the things. No one's allowed to discriminate by way of employment or by accommodation. Accommodation is not just, you know, hotels. It's any service that they may provide um, or not provide I suppose would be uh, subject to review of the Department of Equity Inclusion by way of a complaint you know so I guess somebody makes a complaint says I'm, I'm being discriminated against because of XYZ by those people over there at that company or agency or anybody anybody who does anything that should include nonprofit agencies. Uh, I'm sure that it would exclude churches. I don't know about quasi-governmental agencies. This may be um, uh, a newspaper. Any of these places, are they engaging in acts of discrimination? And what will happen is a complaint is made, an investigation is launched, and a determination will be made by way of probable cause. Uh, that something needs to be done and what they're going to do first is they're going to go to the, uh, the perpetrators of this discrimination tell them what they're doing wrong ask them to please stop what it is that they're doing wrong remedy the situation work with them and encourage them through education to change their behaviors and I don't know may hire the person that they didn't want to hire for whatever reason that would make for a comfortable workplace or you know make sure that you uh, sell flowers to everybody can't not sell flowers to somebody just because so-and-so didn't give me a job because I'm black or trans or Asian or my braids tattoos Baptist whatever what if the service that's being provided is provided to the entire community, right? So I'm the, I get service from, let's say, something like WCQS, WBPR, Carolina Public Radio, who offers this service that I don't pay for because I'm one of those people who just gets it for free and doesn't give to them anymore. Why don't I give to them anymore? They don't have any black people on staff. And so I'm making a social decision not to spend my charitable dollars, not that I actually have any, to give to an all-white radio station. I mean a big staff, not like a little staff, you know? I wouldn't hold the same level of accountability to a really, really tiny radio station, um, but the staff of WCQS, as I've perused through it on their contact page, and I invite you to do the same thing, is 18 people who appear to be white. Now, I know I should not make a judgment based on the black and white photographs, just visual adjudication of, of uh, the race of this staff. That would be inappropriate. And so I actually asked, what's his name? Let's go uh, back up here. David? Is it David Feingold? Yeah. I asked him a couple years ago in an email about the diversity on their staff and he hemmed and hawed and said that he couldn't tell me that because he doesn't have that information because you can't ask anybody, you know, if they're black or white or whatever they are on their application. So they don't actually know. They don't know if they have any black people in the building. And he directed me to see their contact page and discern from that 
draw my own conclusion as to the level of diversity that they have. He told me to do this. This is the direction that David Feingold told me to take, and that was the same instruction that I got from Virginia Daffron when I was asking her about the same thing at the Mountain Express, because I noticed that they had only one uh, black person that you would say was, that's a black lady, black woman, uh, and everybody else looked white. She didn't, she wouldn't tell me who was black and white in that, uh, in her staff and told me to do, you know, look at the pictures. That's what they told me to do. So, uh, I, th I believe that currently the Mountain Express n has no black people on staff. Their contact page has a one cartoon drawing of somebody, but he kind of looks white in the cartoon and uh, everybody else looks white, so that Mountain Express doesn't have any black people. They must be discriminating because that metric has been used to criticize the police department, the fire department, and I believe the water department, and the firm that our attorney chose to use as a consultant or an auditor of the police report. It was a firm from Chicago and he was criticized for this, uh, the selection of this firm because it was a lot of white people in it and it had uh, some black people in it and the percentage of some black people in that firm was the same as the percentage of the people in, in Asheville, as it turns out, right? But there were some black people there, 13% in this firm in Chicago. There are black cops, there are black firemen, but there are not any black anybody's at WCQS or at the Mountain Express or at the Buncombe County Tourism Development Authority. Now that's a staff of I believe 25 people, all of them white, five of them are male. Since 80 percent white women at the Tourism Development Authority, um, it's headed by a woman, our Chamber of Commerce is headed by a woman, and it is a majority of women on their staff, and I believe they might have uh, two African Americans on their staff. Those are really big agencies. I'm not so concerned about some cafe, you know, in a strip mall somewhere, anti-maskers, pro-Trumpers, and blah, 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 blahs, and pull your pants suppers in my store getting slammed. I don't really care about those people. You know, if they want to sell fried egg sandwiches to their regulars over there and, you know, that shouldn't be, but it's not really the, the end of the world. The Buncombe County Tourism Development Authority thoroughly affects the culture and uh, the dynamics in this area by way of their expenditures, which are huge. They were collecting $26 million a year uh, before the pandemic, and it's going to get back to that after uh, everything resumes and we race into the roaring 20s again. Uh, $26 million, and they have to spend every penny of it. Every penny that they collect, they got to spend. $26 million divided by 365, as you know what that number would be, comes up to $71,000. The Buncombe County Tourism Development Authority spends $71,000 a day, every day, Saturday and Sunday. Every day, $71,000. And uh, they could be fined 100 bucks a day for being uh, racist and not having any black people on their staff. I mean, none. If not having very many blacks on the police force or on the, in the fire department or in the water department or, you know, other places is a sign of systemic racism. What is the absolute lack, the zero percent thereof? According to what I should be able to decide about this staff based on the directions I was given by David Firegold and Virginia Daffron at the Mountain Express and also at WCQS, reverse respectively. Um, seems really racist. It must be awkward as hell for the WCQS crew to report on 
issues of diversity in this town. Also, they don't ever seem to give any disclaimer to the fact that one of their biggest contributors, because they're on the radio all the time, this is brought to you by the Van Winkle Law Firm, doing X, Y, Z, fighting for you, providing for this and that, and that is the law firm that our mayor is a partner in. It is her firm. It is, she's a partner in it. Hers, hers. Um, but it may as well say Van Winkle Mannheimer and all of the other partners on it, but it just says Van Winkle and the rest of the partners, whoever they are, uh, hide a little bit, but we do know that um, uh, Esther Mannheimer, our mayor, is a partner in that firm. So how can, how can these people be uh, reporting on local issues fairly when the mayor is paying them? Or the mayor's firm is paying them? It's just like so like, really? Come on. I didn't do, it's not me, it's not my name on the check. Uh, Gwen Whistler's husband paid for an anniversary shout out on WCQS over there and I've seen that uh, there's a board member at Asheville FM that's a Van Winkle associate uh, so you know we're not getting fair coverage in this town but anyway back to the issue of this you know anti-discrimination ordinance which is like it's one of those things that you can't say anything against because the, what will be said is like, well, you're pro-discrimination, which is absolutely absurd. How is this going to work? So, like I said, somebody calls because they've been aggrieved in some way, and this city office, which doesn't have an attorney in it, the, the, the people deciding what is probable cause and whatnot, it's like you're not a court, you're not judges, there is no actual threshold, you're not a magistrate, you don't have the power to subpoena anybody, you're really going to go knock on somebody's door and say, excuse me, I would like to see what's up. It's never going to happen. But if anywhere that it should happen, it should be in these institutions that actually have a huge effect on what we know about what's going on in town and an unbelievable amount of money being spent to you know create tourism culture plus the chamber of commerce which is uh you know built on the site of old uh, william coleman's old place over there on uh, 36 motford avenue more on him later um so this is just it's performative Kim Roney was asking the attorney at, in the city council meeting, you know, a hundred bucks a day, that's not very much. How much more can, can we uh, charge him more? Buncombe County Tourism Development Authority has no black people on staff, and it affects our culture a whole, whole lot, and they spend $71,000 every single day, including Monday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday. So, yeah, we should be, uh, we should be finding the Buncombe County Tourism Development Authority for discrimination at 12% of their take because 12% of the population in Asheville is black and 0% of the population at the Buncombe County Tourism Development Authority is black. Therefore, what's 12% of $71,000? That's what they get fined every single day, Saturday and Sunday included, until they reach a staffing that is uh, a mirror of reflection of our community. How about that? How about we do that? How about if you really care about your community, you write to WCQS and ask them, how can you be covering issues of all the people in the community when you're as white as the Masters Golf Club? Somewhere between that and a marshmallow white. That's how white your staff is. And if I'm wrong about that, do correct me. Please let me know what level of diversity, what kind of diversity, WCQS, WBPR, Carolina Public Radio, um, or Blue Ridge Public Radio, uh, their name is this week. Um, stop giving to them. 
Every time you get on the uh, the radio, every time you get on the radio, <laughs> ring it up, and you hear them begging for money so that they can continue to provide for the community, tell them no. Not until you, you know, look like the rest of the community, sound like the rest of the community, hear like the rest of the community. I mean, it's nice to listen. I listen to it because it's informative, and I think it's somewhat, you know, objective. And, you know, I think they are good reporters at NPR and PBS, but locally it's just sort of like, come on, y'all. Seriously? In this woke-ass town? <laughs> You're the ones who need to be begging for money? Uh... So as soon as the Department of Equity and Inclusion has the fill out your uh, discrimination, transgression, let us know what's going on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to file stuff on all these people. Mount Express, um, WCQS, Bunker County Tourism Development Authority, Chamber of Commerce, all those people. Y'all don't have enough black people. There's only, I think, two between all of those agencies. All of them. One is a building supervisor at the Chamber of Commerce. I don't begrudge the profession of that. <sighs> Shout out to the working men. Thanks for helping, uh, you know, keep the place uh, looking good for us. This is an embarrassment. Asheville is an embarrassment behind its, uh, you know, woke cloak of, of, uh, just of total horseshit. Performative. That's what's going on in Asheville. Sad to say, but that's the way, that's the way it goes. I hope everybody, uh, can return to their quinoa and pasta salad salad.